Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing my four step on page optimization process that will grow any pages traffic. And it's so simple, it's stupid. I don't want to waste any time, so I'm going to quickly share these secrets right off the bat. Now, the first thing I want to say is you have to choose your target keyword wisely. When you're doing on page optimization for SEO, the keyword you choose determines the rest of the optimization. And so if you choose the wrong keyword, then everything goes downhill from there. You're not optimizing the page for the right keyword. Therefore, your optimization is null. So to jump into this, to find your keyword, you can use Google Search Console, one of my favorite. If it's an existing page, you can check out what keywords it's ranking for, and you can choose a keyword from there. Second, you can use SEMrush, always a great tool. Using its magic tool, you can see a whole list of keyword generate just from typing in whatever your page is about, as well as popping in any keyword to see what that page ranks for and stealing your competitor's keywords, finding a good target keyword. But today I'm gonna assume you have chosen a keyword that you wanna rank for. Whether it's dog harnesses, cat harnesses, whatever it is, you have some keyword in mind that you'd like your website to show up for in a particular page to show up for. From there, we're going to go into four steps that will optimize the page for that keyword. The first step is SEO title tag optimization. Now, this is so critical to your ranking. Kevin Indig on our interview said it's one of the top SEO ranking factors, and I couldn't agree more. Sometimes by simply changing an SEO title tag, I have increased rank by several points, by 20 points even, of positions. And so this title tag is extremely crucial to your rankings. It's something you want to think about a lot. So first off, there are three principles when it comes to an SEO title tag. This is first, the keyword must be in the SEO title tag. You need it traditionally at the front of the title tag, but this isn't always the case. You can use different strategies, but you do get a benefit towards the keyword being earlier or more towards the left within the title tag. Second, you need to think about CTR. CTR is click through rate. This is one of the most important factors to an SEO title. It's how to get the user, the reader to click on your result on Google. So how can you differentiate yourself so that somebody searching on Google for your keyword, whether it's star dog harnesses or cat harnesses will click on yours. This is very critical and sometimes it doesn't matter if the keyword is uh, towards the left of the title tag in case you want to focus more on CTR. So CTR is critical. The third factor is secondary keywords, making sure that you have additional keywords and variants within the title tag so that you're optimizing not only for the primary target keyword that you chose, but also other variations of that keyword, other secondary keywords should be in your title. Now that we went over the three principles of SEO title tag optimization, we're gonna show you three examples. One, dog harnesses, how to optimize a title for that keyword. Then how to prepare for LASIK, as well as LASIK eye statistics. This is just a couple of variants, articles, and pages that you may wanna optimize a title tag so you can get a good idea of how this works. So we're gonna jump in here and I'm actually using a template that I built. This is usually for new pages, but it also can be old pages. So we're gonna go in here and you see right off the bat, we have page title. The page title is so critical. I love to use Moz's SEO title tag page, which actually gives you a title tag preview tool which we can directly see what will our title tag look like on Google without adding it to our website and all of that. So we can add in anything here. It will show us when it gets truncated, which just means this ellipsis here so that um, anything above 60 characters we're not gonna see on Google, just gonna disappear. Um, and that's always good to know because you typically wanna keep your SEO title tags under 60 characters. And this will allow you to have a more concise and better look on the Google search results. So if we search dog harnesses, 
the first thing you usually do is check out what are people using for their title. So here is the SEO title tag. It's what shows up on Google. And then you have a meta description. And already we can see that this rough wear person, they're doing good because they're position one. But they also do have this ellipses. So their title tag is longer than it needs to be. Although that's not always a problem. If it looks good and it looks like something you would click on as a user and that your customers will click on, then it's a good title tag. So honestly, this is pretty good. I like that word strong. I like secure. All of that, that's exactly what you want when you're searching for dog prices. So a lot of this is just stepping into the shoes of the searcher and thinking, what would I want to click on? Or what would your customer want to click on? If those overlap, that's good. If not, you're going to have to, you know, use a little bit more brain power to step into someone else's shoes. We have dog harnesses here and we can see their page. But what we're focusing on is just this title tag and it's getting updated on with JavaScript there. And so they also added a secondary keyword here every day harnesses for dogs. And so this actually this title tag is pretty great. Um, sometimes you may even want to go over 60 characters as long as that dot 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 doesn't um, reduce click through rate. So in this case, he got the secondary keyword while also having a pretty strong looking title. Like I would click on this, um, you know, strong, secure every day. You kind of understand what they're saying. We also have another title here. I don't love it. Uh, I'm not sure what no pull means. Um, so I would ignore that. If you're an affiliate article, you would do something like the best harnesses. Um, if we take one of these, you can always kind of start with it and uh, go from there within this tool. So first off the bat, we probably want dark hot dog harnesses right at the start. That gives it a little bit of a benefit for that keyword. Then we may say for sale, something like that, uh, just a CTR one. Um, and then we might say strong and secure. So this would be kind of doing a similar title tag to this page. And I really think about these title tags. So I would not just do a two second title tag and end it there. Um, I might do something like this. That's probably what I would go for. Kind of taking from this guy, um, but editing it a little bit. And I would probably have the full title there. Now, if you do have a brand name, it may get cut off. This to me looks like a good title tag. So let's say if it's Petco, it would look like that. Um, but then if you have a long brand name, like your pet company, it will get cut off. So that's why this tool is so useful. Um, that is a title tag for a collection page or a product page that focuses on getting the keywords in there while still having a CTR as well as additional keywords making sure the keyword is at the start, if possible. Now I'm gonna look at how to prepare for LASIK. So this is more of a blog article, which is gonna have much different titles. So what to do before LASIK, 11 tips for your first eye exam, um, eye surgery. So that's pretty good. Um, I think that's a pretty solid title tag, how to prepare for LASIK before and on surgery day, seven ways to prepare before LASIK. So now you're starting to see with a blog post, Actually, the title itself structures the blog post sometimes. So seven ways, before and after, 11 tips. These actually determine how you're going to write the article. And it's kind of the value proposition that you're giving to people on that page. Here they've chosen to not use their brand name so that they can have more text on the page and not get a dot dot dot. Since it would look like this if they did use their brand name. So I don't want to bore you too much with me going through a ton of title tags. I hope that that explains it a little bit. I may do a full video on this. Just let me know if you want that. But the principles are clear. You want your target keyword ideally to the left of everything. The first thing you write in your title tag. Next, you want to focus on CTR. How can you make this interesting? How can you provide a new angle to your blog post versus other pages? Third, how can you add additional keywords, secondary keywords like everyday harnesses and all of these kind of factors? 
once you have your SEO title tag, you are set. This is an incredible part of the process, but you're not done yet. Next, we're gonna go into keyword variation. This is so important. Your content needs to have a certain amount of keywords throughout the page, as well as even keyword density. So let's step into here and look at some keywords. Now, a small note I'm gonna make, this isn't an exact step, but you do need a great URL. URLs are very important for SEO. They are a top ranking factor as well. So you'll wanna optimize that however best you can too. But the main thing is looking at these primary keywords. So if we put in like dog harness, uh, maybe dog harness for sale, this you should have more or less chosen uh, initially. So, okay, we have a dog harnesses page. We want these primary keywords. Next, we're gonna look at keyword variations. The easiest way to do this is just jump into SEMrush and show what competitors are ranking. So we can just throw in Roughwares article, this one, and we can see everything they rank for, dog harness, harness with handle, etc. You're gonna wanna add all of these into your content to optimize that page. I exported the keyword for Messy Rush, and then I dropped them into just one of these online tools that goes from a column to a commented comma list. I dropped those into our, uh, our template, and then I just clean up any that may be not relevant so if we're not roughware, we want to take out any of the roughware keywords and make sure that everything is accurate and relevant for the page. Side tip, if we're optimizing an existing page, we're going to just double check what the keyword density is. So already we see that they're using dog harness 23 times. Um, and so if our page is barely using dog harness, we need to increase that quite long. You can look at competitors versus uh, your own keyword density and increase that to be more similar to the top three. Next, we're going to get additional entities. So this is really just additional keywords. Now I'm not going to go too deep into the concept of entities here. We'll do that in another video because they are very crucial to SEO, but it's a rabbit hole in of itself. An in interesting or easy way to incorporate entities into your process is go to this beautiful website, Topical Relevance, create an account, add in your keyword, and click Get Data. This is a free tool that someone of the SEO community created, and it will give you entities, LSI keywords that will uh, help your relevance in your content. So what are entities? Entities are essentially just similar keywords that are used throughout the text that are relevant to the topic. So if you're talking about dog, dog harness, you might want to also talk about adjustment points, no pull, buying options, attachment points, small dogs, big dogs, and different dog breeds. This way you're mentioning different topics that are relevant towards your keyword, but they might not be ranking keywords because SEM Rush is showing you keywords that rank on Google, but they're still relevant keywords that might not be SEO, you know, search engine keywords, but they're still you know, types of harnesses, leash clips, this kind of stuff that is relevant towards your page and Google sees as relevant. And you need to add that onto your content. An entity is essentially anything that's on Wikipedia. And so you can even search dog harness and see what comes up and what is linked here. So right there, types of harnesses, no pole, chest, wide harness, sled dog harness, all of these are going to be entities since they're types of harnesses that are relevant towards this term, but it's not something that is going to result in that keyword on Google. At our agency, we use NeuronWriter and OnPage.ai, two great softwares that will just generate the entity list for you. You'll throw that into this document, check the how many times those are used, any missing terms, and it will do it for you. Bonus tip, look at word count of your competitors and get an idea of whether your page is way far out on word count, whether you need to add more words, or even if you need to reduce word count for your SEO. The next extremely critical thing for on-page SEO is your heading structure. You want to look at the number of heading tags as well as the keywords and entities in your heading tags. So. What is a heading tag? Well, to get down to the basics, heading tags are just subheaders. 
So whenever you read an article, you're going to see bolded text, you know, types of dog harnesses, and then you're going to have type one, type two, type three, and they each are going to have text under them describing that type of dog harness. These are H1s, H2s, H3s, they're heading tags. So all heading tags are, are subheadings that give a structure to a document. So just like MLA format from school, whatever you're used to. These heading tags are critical for SEO. This is how Google and other search engines structure an article and understand relevance or importance. So if you have a keyword in your H1 tag, which is essentially your title, then you have relevance for that keyword. You have importance there. You're saying that this keyword is extremely important, that it is a primary section of our article. And if you're going through each keyword and having each heading tag, like your H2s, H3s, having these keywords in them, then that's showing just how important they are to your article. And it's going to boost up your rank Google. So how do we actually practically do this? Let's jump into the computer again here. So um, the way that we can do this is that we can look at our keyword again, dog harness, or how to prepare for LASIK. And we can just look at our competitors heading tags. So we're going to click in here and we're going to use this amazing tool SEO meta in one click. I'll try to put it in the description. If it's not comment saying SEO meta in one click or whatever you want, and we'll get that to you. This tool is fantastic. It'll show you the title tag meta description, but really importantly, it'll show you their header structure. And so right off the bat, this is from their navigation, so we're going to ignore that. And we see their H1 is dog harnesses. We see their H2 is campfire orange. These are their products. So we look down here. I believe these are their products. So these are actually their products. Um, but these seem to be their colors. Maybe that's from this color section, something like that. Next, we see this choosing the right dog harness. So we may want to include something like that on our page. And then the different uh, content pieces with different keywords like harness add-on, cooling harness, dog running vest, evacuation kit. All of these are keywords within their headers. And we can see this is a featured article with some content that links to an article. Overall, a very pretty page. We also have some FAQs for SEO as well. And so pretty well optimized. Now, if our page had two heading tags, what this is going to tell me is that we need a lot more H2s with a lot more keywords. So this page has 42 H2s. It's really just all H2s and it has a lot of keywords in those H2s. And so if our page has three, four, five H2s, we need to kick that up a lot to be on par with this page's optimization. So let's also look at how to prepare for LASIK. We can click on this first result and we can open up our tool and we can see their heading tags. Now, also, you don't need a tool for this. You can also just look through their article. These are all the heading tags. So you can just look at their subheading structure just like this. So we see we have a lot of questions, all kinds of stuff like that. And I like using this because sometimes those heading structures, uh, well, it really just makes it simple. Um, and we can see when they're using H2, H3s, H2s. So right off the bat, we see they have uh, 15 H2s, 5 H3s. So we're going to want to be around that range. You do want to look at other competitors and kind of get an average of all of them, but look at each one and get an idea. Here, I would really note the, the questions, you know, can I drink alcohol? Can I drink caffeine? If we have an existing page and we're not mentioning these topics, that's something we need to add into our page. So really you're looking for missing topics in keywords and heading tags, and you're pretty good to go. Um, so make sure that you have, you know, what if I had flu before LASIK and then check every, well, check the top three ranking pages and check out their heading structures. You're going to have a lot of variation, of course. So like here we have two H2s and a lot of H3s. The main thing is just to get an idea of how people are structuring their SEO and improving it on your article. So typically the number one position is kind of the best to copy. And typically you're going to see that, hey, you need more H2 tags. You need more H3 tags. You want to make sure you only have one H1. 
Last thing to mention is you do want to think about your user with your heading tags. You want to think about who is actually on the other end of that topic so that you can optimize for user experience, which Google is increasing their importance up. Here's an example of one of my content briefs where we go very in detail on the structure, the heading structure. So we, you know, what to do before, what to do the day of, and then have H3s for each one of these. This is actually a very old one um, from, I think, years ago. So I actually do it a little bit differently now, but this just gives you an idea. You want to be very specific about your heading structure and you can get creative. So um, this is for preparing for LASIK. Um, I kind of did it my own way by what to do day of, what to do after, uh, what to do before. Now here, I would nowadays add those question tags that we saw in the first article. Um, but this is from years ago. Perhaps this wasn't even ranking here, but that would be an improvement on this page. So that's how you do on-page optimization. So thank you so much for watching. We went through SEO title tags, keyword density, keyword variations, as well as heading tag structure. We had a couple notes about URLs, word count, and other things of that nature. Now I can't go into internal links because they are such a big topic, but of course we're going to be reviewing that really soon. I love internal links. I'm gonna share you how our internal link process works. So comment below if you're interested in that um, and any you know notes or comments that you want for me to explore. Anyway, thank you so much. Comment, like, subscribe. I really do appreciate all the support I've gotten on the videos. Thank you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah.